What does the future of glaucoma screening and treatment look like? Genetic testing and polygenic risk scores are here, and they may represent one of the most powerful ways to harness the information locked away in our DNA. Professor Jamie Craig, a clinician researcher in glaucoma genetics and co-founder of pioneering polygenic risk score firm Cyonix Bio, is here to talk about the science behind the technology and how it could change the way we approach glaucoma and other eye diseases forever. I'm Professor Jamie Craig. Uh, I'm based at the Flinders Health and Medical Research Institute in Adelaide, South Australia. I'm a clinician scientist and I work in the field of glaucoma and our research is very much about risk profiling and genetic susceptibility to the disease. One of the issues is that patients can be unaware that they've developed a problem early in the disease and our treatments are very, very good at slowing disease progression and preventing further damage, but we can't bring vision back that's already lost. We need a better way to profile risk so that that doesn't happen. If we could identify the patients who are going to do badly earlier and they start their treatment earlier, that they're likely to live out their life without sufficient vision loss. The way we're thinking is to get the right treatments to the right patients in the right location. The architecture of this disease is very strongly driven by a cumulative burden of common genetic variants, which individually may have small to modest effect size, but if we can add those up, they can have an enormous impact on what the likely outcome is for an individual. Polygenic risk testing is about finding a way to amalgamate the risk of all those very carefully proven common variants and to put them into one overall score that we can look at on a population bell curve and look at that determining how likely somebody is to develop the disease. We're particularly interested in patients who sit very high in that, in the top 10 to 20 percent, but we're also interested in the low end of that bell curve because that's where we may find some ability to reduce the burden of treatment and monitoring on patients at lower risk who haven't yet developed glaucoma. Nature Genetics study in 2020 was the one that described the way that we put the multi-trait polygenic risk score together and that was the first time we were working in 2700 variants contributed to that version of the polygenic risk score. That showed differences in odds ratio between low and high decile individuals in the population of up to 15 fold as to whether they would develop glaucoma, particularly advanced glaucoma. But further, we went on to look at things like the age of onset that were associated in high-risk patients with earlier disease onset by a decade, how many family members patient would have who are affected, and that was very tightly correlated to high genetic risk. We looked at whether a patient would progress on their structural parameters of the optic nerve on OCT, and that was associated. We also looked at the need for surgery. Patients who had trabeculectomy or tube surgery were more likely to have had those interventions if they had high polygenic risk. The way in which this testing is done in our setting is with a saliva which is collected with a cheek swab that leads to a DNA sample and then a genetic array is run in a laboratory and then the result will come back to the clinician uh, in a digital format. And so then uh, the way that we see that working is that the clinician will be working with the patient to look at how that may modify the clinical factors that they're already working with. And, and then that will lead to you know, different management approaches. What we found, I guess, to some extent surprising is how well correlated the polygenic risk is with the number of family members that are, are affected in our studies. So this is a very interesting thing because it means that the patient in front of the doctor, their polygenic risk score is actually an influencer of what likelihood their other family members are to be affected with glaucoma. It's very common for the children of our patients who have more severe disease to be very worried about their risk naturally of getting this disease. So they are often asking us, well, what age should I be checked from? How often should I be checked? And so there's a real opportunity there for the family members to find a pathway to access polygenic risk testing. And often these things may be driven by patients. We see 
a real opportunity in glaucoma suspects to understand their risk and to know when to intervene and where they should be monitored and how often. For early manifest glaucoma, we have strong data about how often a patient is experiencing an escalation of treatment and when they may go on to require more invasive treatments. We think that for our clinicians, making difficult decisions about who in which to do surgical intervention, I can see that there's an opportunity there combined with the clinical risk profile that it will help people to make better decisions. I can see a point where the information that comes from this type of technology is going to be so fundamental to the care of patients that it's likely to be the standard of care. People are going to want to know that they actually were afforded the best care that they could. And sometimes patients actually do need that information to take the next step to be more compliant with therapy, to take the step to have a risky procedure, which is actually going to save their sight. Polygenic risk scores are just getting started. With a broad evidence base and burgeoning backbone of data, clinicians are enjoying a glimpse of the depth and breadth of the technology's predictive power for glaucoma and other ocular diseases. For more information on how to incorporate polygenic risk score testing into your practice, head to the Cionics Bio website or email us at info at